Hello, my name is Matt, and welcome to the big pod crash guide for scoreboards in Minecraft that a lot of you seem to have wanted after the redstone video for cops and robbers. Um, in this video, I'm just going to be going over pretty much every single scoreboard command and explaining how they can be used, and pretty much an easy way to remember them since there are a lot of scoreboard commands and they are hard to remember. And that's sort of what makes scoreboards seem confusing, even though they're actually not. Scoreboards are actually a really simple thing to get your ha get your mind around, get your head around once you understand them. And the best way to do that really is to split them into three categories. There's objective commands, there's player commands, and there's team commands. And I'm going to go over each one individually in this video and explain a little bit more about what they are. Um, below this video, not below the video, it's still in the video, just the bottom part of it. Um, there's going to be annotations going to each part of the video if you feel you want to see just one part of it. But the, each section sort of follows into each other, so I'd recommend just watching it all through and just sit back and enjoy the video. We're going to start out with objective commands because they sound a little bit weird and they help explain the others. So we're going to go straight into that section now. Okay, so we're on the objective section of the video. And whilst editing the bit before this, I realised I said this would help explain the other two parts, which are players and teams. Um, that's a bit of a lie. It only exp helps explain players. They don't actually have anything to do with teams, which makes it simpler. Well, you can use teams and objectives together in a command, but they are not part of the root of the commands like they are with players. But we'll, we'll get to that later on. Don't worry about that. Um, for objectives, there's actually only four commands. However, I like to say there's only three, because there's this list command, um, which is slash scoreboard objectives list. Now, there's one for players, and there's also one for teams, so it'll be scoreboard players list and scoreboard teams list. What these list commands do is it doesn't work in a command block, so it can't be used in a game, because there's no point. What this will do is it will just list in your chat what, all, what objectives are currently in use. So this is really only used to for debugging a map. It's not used in a map, it's just used to help make it. And to be honest, when me and Jordan made maps, we've never used these list commands. We've just worked out by a conventional means. So I'm only pointing this out because it exists. I don't think it's a very useful command. And since it's not useful in maps, we're not going to go over that. So really, there's only three commands for, for objectives. There's add, there's the add objectives command, the remove objectives command and the set display objectives command. Um, the only thing that might be a little bit tricky to understand about objectives to begin with are there's different types of objectives and there's different display slots. Um, and we'll go over those there. Um, for anyone wondering, Jord isn't here. I've just logged his account in because he's my, he's going to be my like stick figure. I'm going to he's going to be the dummy, uh, not quite a dummy. That's, that word's got another meaning, so that'd be a bit confusing. So, ignore George for now. Um, we're going to go over to display slots and objective types. Objective types would be a good start. Um, there's five different types. The first one is health. That's fairly self-explanatory. If you make an objective and it's a health objective, your score will be your health. So if you're at full health, you'll have a score of 20. And if you're, if you're dead, you'll have a score of 0. Um, so that's what health is, and it defaults to what your health currently is. Death count, when you, when the objective's created, you've got a default score of zero, and whenever you die, your death count will go up by one. So if I was to die once, I'd have a death count of one. And if I was to die twice, I'd have a death count of two, etc. Player kill count, it's a default at zero again. They're all defaults at zero except for health, pretty much. The player kill count... And we'll keep track of how many players you've killed. So if I was to have an objective currently running for player kill count, and I was to just butcher Jord on the spot, um, I would have a player kill count of 1. And Jord would have a death count of 1, if there was a death count objective currently in action. Um, total kill count is exactly the same as player kill count, except it takes into account mobs as well. So if I was to kill a zombie and then kill Jord, I'd have a score of 2. And then the last one is dummy. Now this is my favourite one because it's dead useful. Um, it starts at zero. Nothing changes it except for commands. So all of these except for health can be changed with commands. We'll get to that later on. Um, so say if I was to have a death count, if I was to die once, I could, I'd could. i have a death count of one. 
but I could also use a command to make my death count 10 or something like that. A dummy only uses commands, there's no other way of changing that, which is really useful because that can be used as a variable, not as a score. Um, we'll, um, again, we'll get to that later on pretty much. Um, a dummy, that's all you need to know. You can only change your score via commands. Um, and those are all the types of objectives really. It's just a number, that's what an objective is, it's just a number assigned to everyone and that number will change based on certain things. For, so for example, kills, deaths, your health and anything you want if it's a dummy. Um, and then, okay, so that's objective types. Going on to display slots, there's only three. There's list, which is when you press tab and it shows up there. There's sidebar, which is when it's on the right hand side of your screen pretty much where Jord is on my screen right now, which you've all seen in other games probably. And then below name, which is literally below the name above the player. Um, oh, it's going night time. There we go. And that's why Jord's in the game, just so I can show that. Um, so we'll get back to the commands. And the add command is scoreboard objectives. All, this, all the um, objective commands start as scoreboard objectives. And then same for players, scoreboard players, and same for teams, scoreboard teams. So for objectives, scoreboard teams, then add, so obviously you're adding a new team, objective even, not team, confuse myself there. Then you pick a name for your objective, the type of objective, and then display name. What display name is, is if it's on show, like if it's on the side of your screen, um, or underneath the player, it will show the um, display name as opposed to the name, because the name you may want it to all be lowercase to make commands simpler and stuff like that. And a display name can have a space in it and stuff like that. If there is no display name, it will use the normal name as its name. Remove is exactly the same as the add command, except you don't actually need any of that. I don't know why that was there. So it's scoreboard objectives, remove instead of add, and then the name of the objective. So exactly the same as the add command, just remove instead of add, and it's just the name, because obviously you don't need to specify the other stuff. And then set display is what lets you put it in different displays like list, sidebar and below name. It's scoreboard objectives, set display, slot, which is its display slot, and then the name of the objective. Um, for this command, the objective has to exist. And same for remove, add, it doesn't because you, you're making it. Um, and that's, that's it for um, objectives. There's not much to it. There's add objectives, remove objectives, and set display. Um, I've set up a few examples here. Um, these commands, all these use, they use um, a, an objective called score, and its display name is haha, -ha, so they can be completely different. Um, these three are all exactly the same. The second command um, is setting its display to below name, which is this one, uh, list, which is this one, and set and sidebar, which is this one. And then the back is a player command, um, so we won't go into too much detail with those. Um, but I'll explain why that's there in just in a second. So if we do below name to begin with, this will, ch um, let's see. So as you can see, George's got a, a score of zero and it says, and down at the bottom it says, I've got a score of one because what that does is it's adding a score of one to one person, the closest person to that command block. And I was just closer due to, you know, a Pythagorean triangle, right angle triangle, I'm closer. Um, so that's why I, I'll be on one, George will be on zero. and when it's on below name, it will show zero straight away. Um, the reason that's different is because if we go to list, um, if you hold tab, the score is shown there. So of course I was closer again, so I got a score of one. George's on zero still. And that also shows zeros for people. However, if I use sidebar, as you'll see, I'll get added to the sidebar, but George doesn't. Because you for sidebar, your score has to change for it to go into the sidebar. I'm not going to go into detail on that yet. That's for the player section over there, so we'll get rid of that. But also, as well, um, if I was to press all three of these, only one of these front commands would work. Because if there's a score, if there's a sc an objective already added called score, adding another one, it's not going to do anything. It's the exact same command. These three, though, it'll add that score, but it'll add that it'll add score the objective into all three slots, and then of course I'll get add one, add one, add one when I press all these. So if I was to press that, my score goes up by one. George's still on zero. My score goes up again to two, as you can see there. And if I press there again, I'll be on three. 
but you can see it below his name on the sidebar and if you hold tab. So you can have one objective in all three slots. And this is just a little example of the health one. And um, what this does is it adds a scoreboard. Uh, I, keep, I need to stop saying that. It adds an objective called hit points. It's a health type objective, and its display name is health with a capital H. So if I use that, it creates the objective. Now if I go to Jord, the problem with health is that it's it shows zero until they take damage. So if I punch him, okay, he was on creative mode. I just realised, but he's on zero health. It'll update when they take damage. So if I punch him, see, it'll put him to 20. The reason he's on 20 is because he just regenerates his health straight away. He'll go down to 19 and 18 and whatever like that. So that will update and that will show the health. And that's how people do it in adventure maps. And that'll just, that just clears that. Um, so that's all it is for objectives, really. Three commands. Adding, removing and setting the display. And then there's just, there's just, that was just a bunch of examples. And... Yeah, that's all there is to objectives. Um, for changing player scores and stuff, that's actually what the player commands are. So we're going to go into that section right now. Okay, so we're in the player command section of the video. This is following directly on from the objectives. Um, so if you're watching this bit, I'm assuming you've either watched that bit or no objective commands like the back of your hand. Or you just need help with these, which is also good. So... To begin with, there's only five commands for players. Um, one of them is a list command, of course, which is scoreboard players list. That'll just list all the players that are currently being tracked by the scoreboard. Useless in a in a uh, actual map. That's just to make sure everyone's being tracked when you're testing your map. So we're going to ignore that again. So there's only really four commands you have to worry about, and all of these commands require objectives to be in play to use them. That's why these tie in with objectives. Because, um, of course, like I said, you can change objective scores using commands. That's what these commands are. So, say you had a dummy or a kill count, you can use the add command to add a score to them. So, like, you can add five points to them, something like that. Likewise, the remove command will take points away. Coming back here, the set command won't add or remove points, it'll put their score to a number. So, if I wanted to set their score to five, I'd set it to 5. Obviously, I couldn't add or subtract a number because I don't know what they're currently on. So that's how a set command comes in useful. It's going night time again. Times it's 0. And then finally, the reset command, it puts their score back to 0. It's a bit different with health. As you saw before, um, when it first happens, it shows 0 until you punch them. I'm assuming the reset command will put them back to 0 again until you punch them again. I've not actually tested this with the health one, mainly because... With health commands, you don't use these at all because these can't be used with health objectives because you can't change them. Um, you can't change them. Right. In fact, you know what? You know what that means? You can't use this with health. You can't use any of these with health, actually. So ignore that last bit. I wasn't. That was just a bad train of thought by me there. These don't apply to health objectives. So if you have a health objective, it's very simple. You just stick with them. Um, for everything else, though, you can set their score, you can add, their, add to their score, you can remove from their score. Like, remove points, that is. And reset puts them back to zero. But as you saw with the sidebar, where George currently is on my screen, um, before, you add, before you change the score, it doesn't appear. Resetting will also make them not appear on the side. So that's ineffectively the same as deleting the score, deleting the objective and then adding them back to it again. So that's also pretty useful in some things. Um, so we'll look at the, yeah, well, well, yeah, let's actually look at the commands. They're fairly simple to understand. The set command is scoreboard players set, then the player you want to set, their score. The objective, obviously you need to specify which objective you want to use. And then count is the number you want to set it to. So if you wanted to set it to 5, the count would be 5. Add is identical to the set command, except it says add instead of set. And then, of course... You specify your player, you specify your objective, and then the count is the number you add on to their score. So if they currently have 5 points and the count is 1, they'll go up to 6. Remove, again, is identical, it just says remove, and then it'll subtract count off their current score. So if they have 5 and the count is 1, they'll go down to 4. And then reset is just scoreboard players, reset, and then the player you want to reset. Very simple. And that's all there is to the player commands. So, 
we'll go into some examples. Um, of course, to show the examples, we need to actually have an objective. So I've set this up here. Um, it's just adding another objective like we showed before. Player OBJ is going to be a dummy, and its um, display name is score with a capital S. And then this is going to add it to the sidebar, so we see it on the side of our screen. So if I run that, that's just a clear to get to delete the objective. So of course we don't want to do that yet. As you can see, I've just created it. It's a sidebar, but it's not showing up yet until I change my score. So score plus one shows it on the side. I can spam that. I'll go up to two, go up to three. Minus one can also do that. Note that it can show zero. It won't disappear again when you put it down to zero. And it can also do negative numbers as well. Um, so yeah, that's pretty good. This is exactly the same as the plus one command this is oh yeah I should probably show those <laughs> scoreboard players add then player at P objective so player OBJ and then count one that just adds one to the score this command is exactly the same as that except it says remove instead this is the same as the first one except it adds and then two so I can spam that and go up pretty quickly this one sets my score to zero so set and then me well the closest person which is me the objective, play objective, zero, pressing that, puts it to zero. Likewise, this one puts it to five, same command, just with five at the end. Um, so if I do reset, like if I delete the scoreboard and then bring it back, obviously it's not on the side of my screen. If you want to show zero on the side of the screen, you have to add a score and remove a score. It's pretty simple, you just do an add and a remove command straight after each other with the same count, so it goes up and down, so you're back to, your, back to zero again. Um, the reset command, which I've not actually put up here, does exactly the same as removing that. If I do scoreboard players reset at P, which is the closest person, which is me, it will take you off the side. The objective still exists, but yeah, that's what it does. Um, if I just change this, so instead of at P, I'm going to specify, I'm going to put a name in, which is something you never do, but just for the purpose of this, I'm going to put flubby jubber up to one. So let's see, there we go. So now there's two people on the scoreboard, and that's George going up. If I do reset at P, I'll reset me, it'll take me off the scoreboard, but George will stay on the scoreboard, unless I was to reset at all, at which point it would do that. Um, but I'm going to clear that now, and delete the objective, and change that back. Ch oh, I've ruined my beautiful example. There we go, at P, done. And that is objectives in a nutshell, and players in a nutshell, actually, I should probably say. Um, so you've got objective commands to add and remove objectives and to set their type and like where you can see them. And then player commands is so you can change the points that people have in certain objectives, except for health objectives. These don't apply. And that's pretty much it. The last section is teams. And that, to be fair, is actually completely separate to these. I mean, you can have commands with teams and objectives in them but not in the same sense as these player ones relying on objectives. Team commands don't actually have to interfere with these objectives at all. It's just usually the case. Um, so we're going to go into that now, and that'll be the last section. So let's go into it now. Okay, so we've reached the team section of the scoreboard video. Um, it's the last section. It's the longest section, probably. It depends how fast I talk. But it's still not that complicated. To be honest, the scoreboard system isn't complicated. It's just the way you can use them can get a bit complicated. And I'll show a few examples of that after this. Um, but the actual team section is fairly simple. Um, all it is is a team, funny enough, is just a group of people. And you can throw people into the group. You can take people out of the group. You can do certain things with the group. For example, you can teleport everyone in the group to a certain location. Um, and you can do certain things with the group. Um, so there, are sort of, I'd say there are two main reasons why you'd have a team. One of them is to have a team. That doesn't sound as stupid and as obvious as it sounds. For example, me and George could be on a team, except our colour could be white, and we could still punch each other. So we may as well not be on a team. What I'm thinking as a team would be we could have a different colour name, and friendly fire would be disabled so we couldn't hit each other. So we would be on a team like that. The second reason is to have it as a group that you can use, like I said, um, ev like to teleport people around. Um, you could combine the two. For example, say if we were to have a like red team, we'd have red names, you can't punch each other, and then you could teleport everyone on a red on the red team to a certain location, so like your team's spawn point. 
but they don't have to be teams. You could just do that with a group of people for whatever you want it to be. So that's why teams are useful. It's just you have a group and you can add people to the group and you can do certain things with that group. So let's get on to the commands. There's nine commands, but one of them is the list command, of course. There's scoreboard teams list. This will just list every single team that's currently in use, currently active. Um, but other than that, useless in a mini game because it's just a debug command pretty much. So there's eight commands really. Starting out with, of course, add team. Scoreboard teams add the name of the team and then the display name. So whatever you want it to be called. So it can have, and display name can have a space as well in it. So the remove command, which is the next one, is exactly the same as the add one, except it says remove instead of add. And it doesn't have the display name because you don't have to specify that. It's pointless. You just choose what team you want and you can remove it. Empty team is scoreboard team empty and then the name of the team and that will just kick out everyone from that team so say if you have a team with four people in it and you empty the team all those four all four people will leave the team and then the team will be empty and those four people will no longer be in a team as obvious as that sounds um, so that's what the empty team command does it is useful for a few things not really used it much but it's there if you need it the next two commands are how to add and remove players from the team. And this is why some people sometimes confuse the scoreboard system entirely. Because people get like people can mix up the player commands. People think sometimes that the player commands is what adds people to the team. But then they also see those are affected by objectives. And then they think objectives and teams are wound up together. And then it makes the scoreboard system seem completely messed up and really confusing. But think about it as if it's team related it's always going to be slash scoreboard teams because player and objective commands don't affect teams at all when it comes to stuff like this so to join team to add players to teams and to remove them it's always a slash command for it's always a slash scoreboard teams command never a player command so to add players to a team it's scoreboard teams join then the team and then the players you want to add to that team and then, of course, to remove people from a team, it's just scoreboard teams leave the team and then players. Keep in mind that this isn't add and remove because that's how you actually add and remove the scoreboard, the actual team. For To add and remove players from a team, it's join and leave as opposed to add and remove. So that's how that works. And then finally, there are three other commands. These are the options. So option colour oops is scoreboard teams option then the team then color spelt wrong because it should have a it should have a u in it like that that's how, that's how we spell it here in jolly old england but okay color spelt like that and then value which of course is just the color you want it to be we'll get to those in a second um the next second option is friendly fire so scoreboard teams option that's that does say scoreboard it's just i'm, I'm coming off this edge there scoreboard teams option then the team then friendly fire, all lowercase, and then you specify true or false. So you just say, write the word true or write the word false. And then finally, see friendly invisibles. What this does is if someone's on your team and they have an invisibility potion, if this is true, you'll still be able to see them, like translucent, which is pretty helpful uh, for certain things. Um, so if you right click this, that does say scoreboard, scoreboard teams option. They all start scoreboard teams option and then the team. And then C, Friendly Invisibles. However, F and I are capital in this one, unlike in Friendly Fire. I'm not sure if it is case sensitive, but I think it is. I've just, I've never tested it. I'm, I'm lazy. I probably should have tested that for this, really. But it's just good practice, really, to call it that. And then again, true or false. So for the option commands, it always goes scoreboard teams option, team, option, and then whatever it is. So either true or false or a color value. Um, that's all the commands. And that's all the commands on the scoreboard you've just gone through them all. For colour though, the values, there are quite a lot of values it can take. Um, some of them are a bit inconsistent, so black and white of course. Um, and then there's dark blue, dark green, aqua. Dark blue, dark green, dark aqua, sorry. Dark red, dark purple, dark grey. So counterparts for that are blue, green, aqua, red, light purple, not purple, it has to be light purple, Dark, um, normal, just saying purple won't work. You have to specify that as being light purple. And it's the only one that does that. I don't quite understand that. And then grey. Um, these are all underscores. 
in between just make sure you don't not forget those and then there's also gold and yellow for colors and it's getting night time again however there are a few extras you can add in um, as opposed to uh, there are a few different colors they're not really colors but they are classed as colors there's obfuscated bold strike through underline and italic obfuscated is when the is when they change to different characters rapidly like in the final credits and in other adventure maps bold makes the name bold obviously strike through puts a line through the name underline puts a line under the name and italics like puts all the letters on a slant um so jord's here again and i've got a load of a load of um practice commands or example commands to show this sort of stuff so i'm going to make a team and it's going to be blue team so scoreboard teams add blue is the name of the team and blue with a capital b is the display name i could just call it blue but whatever so i'm just going to add the team nothing's happened yet it's just created a team so join this is going to be the join blue team scoreboard teams join blue at a so everyone so i'm going to join the team and George's going to join the team. So we're going to press that. And you can see, added me and added Jord to the team. Colour, um, scoreboard teams option, blue, which is the team name. That's not the colour because it goes scoreboard teams option, team. So blue is the name of the team. And then colour, and then the value is also blue off that board over there. So we'll run that. Of course, George's name changes to a blue colour. And on his screen, my name would change to blue. But obviously we can't see that on my screen. So that's that. So, and then, in fact, we'll come back to this one. Sc um, team Friendly Fire. So, scoreboard team's option blue, team name. Friendly Fire, false. So if I activate false, and I have to run up to Jord, I can't punch him, because Friendly Fire is disabled. However, if I do enable Friendly Fire, using exactly the same command, except with true at the end, if I whack that on, I can punch him. And there we go, he takes damage. Um, the last one at the end, oh we'll come back to that, we'll do that one last. So we'll go back to see friendly invisibles. So scoreboard, I does say scoreboard, um, if we go back there, scoreboard teams option, blue is the team name, see friendly invisibles is the option we want to change, and then true. So if we run that, if I get a splash potion of invisibility out, uh, for 2 minutes 15, um, if I whack that on Jord, as you can see, I can still see an outline of him and his name doesn't disappear, so I can still see him. Um, and then finally, um, for a bit of fun, obfuscated. I've changed the colour to obfuscated, so instead of blue. So when I do that, you get his, really, his name goes really weird, just like that. And that can sort of be used for a mini game, so you can disguise everyone, so you don't know who this is. I mean, you can vaguely, vaguely see their skin, but if you were to add, say, chain armour to them, It'd be a lot harder to tell who they are, so that would be that'd be a pretty cool idea for a mini game. Might do sometime. Not entirely sure. And then finally, clear scoreboard teams remove blue, which is that command, which is the remove team. Now, when I remove the team, I'm not going to be able to see George anymore because me being able to see him is because we're both on the same team. So when I remove him, when I remove it. He'll still be invisible. If we go over here, we'll be able to see the particle effects. As you can see, there he is. Um, but I can't see him because he's invisible and we're not on the same team anymore because the team doesn't exist. And that, in a nutshell, is all the scoreboard commands and all their uses. It's a lot to take in, but when you break it down and see what they are, they're fairly simple. Objectives, you create and remove objectives. That's, that's all it does. I mean, set display as well. Player commands, it lets you change the scores of players on certain objectives, and that's all that does. And then teams, it lets you add and remove teams. It lets you add players and remove players from teams. They can join and leave. And then you can have team options, which are the colour of them, the friendly fire and the sea friendly invisibles. And that is all the scoreboard system is. It's just what it can be used for is a bit more complicated. And I'll go into a few of those examples after this section. It's going to be the final section of the video. Some examples on how they can be used. So we'll go into that now. Okay, so for the last part, um, we're on a different world. This is my redstone world that I've had since 1.5. Um, just because I've been losing all my others, so I thought I'd make a new one. Um, this uses a load of scoreboard stuff, so I thought it'd be best just to show these, really. Um, this is an example of wireless redstone. 
as well as a level counter. Um, there's quite a lot to this one, but it's pretty cool. Um, but we need to turn it on first. This actually, it actually does have to be turned on. And what this does is it activates a load of scoreboards, a load of scoreboard commands. So we'll have a look at these. So scoreboard objectives add seven seg one dummy. So it just creates a new objective called seven seg one. This does seven seg two, seven seg three, seven seg four, all the way up to seven seg seven. So it just creates seven new scoreboards. Um, and that's pretty much it for that. These two bits here, um, it just subtracts one level, adds one level to me. Um, I'll show you why it does that in a second. Hey guys, Matt here. I'm just interrupting the video there because I didn't show why these have to be here. Um, basically, the reason why is even though this is turned off, um, this is still running. And also as well, past that point, that's not needed. All this is for is this um, clock is just powering. It's just flashing on and off all these command blocks. But um, the reason why those are there is if I just bring my XP down to something that this machine would use. Um, so down to level 2. Um, as you can see here, even though this is off, this is still testing 4. And this will still pass. And these are all powered now. So if this is activated, it won't show anything because this has to be, this has to be blipped on before these actually pass as well like as in get powered because if I turn this on without that so I turn it on it'll create the scoreboards however they'll all be level zero to begin with and they won't get switched to level one be, uh, to my score of one because this is already powered so what this the way that the way this fixes it is is this just if I activate this now what it'll do is it'll activate it it'll change my level which will it'll detect and then it'll change it back which will also detect and that's just why that was there. Um, so just a quick injection. It's going to go back to the video now of me before. Uh, but I hope that clears things up. So back to the main video. And then, of course, to turn it off, it just removes all those seven segments. So over here, if we come over here, this is a hopper clock. Um, ignore that for a second. Coming over here, what this is doing is this is t these, these are test four commands. And what these do is, if the command passes, it gives out output if you have a comparator coming out of it. So this one is testing for maximum level zero, minimum level zero. So if I'm level zero, if, well, the closest person, which is me, of course. So if I'm level zero, this command will pass. At the moment, I'm level four, so this is failing. So, But when I'm level zero, this will pass. And over here, there's seven more commands. And it'll, it sets my score, scoreboard player's set up here, of 7 seg 7 to 1, 7 seg 6 to 1, 5 to 1, 4 to 0, 3 to 1, 2 to 1, and 7 and scoreboard and 7 seg 1 to 1. Now what so what that's just done is it's just changed a bunch of my 7 seg scores to 1 and some to 0. Now if we look at this, this is the 7 segment. And the these command blocks are all getting powered over and over again by a clock. And these are also test four commands. And this is checking for um, my score. This is the score command. It's score underscore then the name of the objective. So this is testing for the closest person with a maximum score uh, on seven seg one of one, and a, and a minimum score score underscore seven seg one underscore min equal one. So what that what this command is testing for is it's testing for the closest person. Oops, go. Ah, oh, that's bad. Hang on a sec. Bear with me. There we go. I was on invisible. There we go. So what this is testing for is um, the closest person making sure seven seg one equals one. Now, of, of course, over here, that would be one, but it's not firing at the moment. This is I've co I've currently got this on one. Actually, no, I've not turned it on, so that's not actually doing anything. Let's let's go do that. So if we turn it on, it activates a bunch of these things um, over here. Now it's activating a few, um, but for this one, it's not one. My current score for seven seg one is zero, so it's off. However, a bunch of others are on, and as you can see, it's showing a number four because my level is four. If we come over here, this is the one that's passing. The rest of them are failing, and as you may have guessed, this is testing for closest person level four, minimum level four. So this will pass when the closest person is level four. I'm level four, so it's passed. So it's activated all these command blocks. So it's set my seven seg score to zero, seven um, two to one. So it's like three to one, and then all those ones and zeros 
if they're 1 it lights up and if they're 0 it turns off because these are all testing for the scores being equal to 1 that's 7 seg 1 that's oops, that's 7 seg 2 um, that one's 7 seg 3 so you know if it's 1 it'll light up because it'll pass and if it's 0 it'll fail and it'll turn off and these change depending on these so if I was to change my level so I think it's XP 1L at P my level goes up to 5 that'll update and go to 5 um, I could do say minus three and it'll go to two now what i've got set up here is that mine only goes up to level six i've i mean to do level seven you'd have to add more on but i've only done up to level six so if i add four and do that it'll go up to six but if i add one extra it won't recognize that because it would be this one but i've not actually put the command in so that's what that's what that is so that's how wireless redstone can be used to make a seven segment because as you can see, this is also showing it, and this is, this is completely disconnected. There's no redstone underground. Um, these aren't connected here. I'm just using the same clock. So I could have these here and that on show. This bit of redstone could be underground or hidden, or could be over there or whatever. And it just that's just wireless. All that does is this sets up the this sets up the seven segments. This chooses this decides what level I am, and then this will show my level by doing that. So that's how, that's how objectives can be used to do wireless redstone. It's not its primary use, of course. Objectives are used mainly to count things and stuff like that. Like, you know, adding like scores like player deaths and player kills and stuff. But this is sort of a cool exploit of using a dummy as a variable, as a programming variable, and it lights up there. Which is pretty cool. That's probably my favourite use for scoreboards, really. And over here is another similar one. Um, did I turn that one off? Yeah, I did. Okay. So we'll turn this one on. This is creating a dummy objective called score. And what these are all doing is this is a clock. Of course, the reason these are these are clocks is because these will only output once they. Well, these will only test the actual command when they receive redstone power. If it's off, it's not just, it's not just going to spontaneously do it. And if it's permanently on it won't it'll, it'll check it once and that's it so a clock will just continuously test these commands so obviously I've just created the objective score and my score for that will be zero currently um, this is testing for my minimum score of being one so when it goes to one this will pass and this will extend this one is checking for two but it's only minimum so when it's all so when it checks two when my score is two this one will still also pass because it's still above one and one's the minimum. So if I'm and then so if it's two, both of these will extend. So if I come over here, I've got a load of number set up. So if I press three, it'll set my score to three. And we'll just extend it like that. And then four, it'll do the same. Say so one, it happens instantly, it all happens at once, which is cool. Like that, and then zero. I'll turn it off. And that can be used as well. Again, these are just two ways of using... These These are the most advanced ways, I'd say, of using scoreboard commands um, as variables. But I think it's, it's a really cool way of doing it because it compacts it because you don't have to have a counter to increase these. And it can be done wirelessly. This can just be anywhere. Um, you can have other redstone to change your score of it. And then this is just... It's, it's just self-contained. It's great. And I think on here that is all the scoreboard stuff. Over here, this is Seth Bling's counter where if you stand in here, it'll start ticking down like that. And then when I come out, it'll turn on again. Um, what this is for is this will test for this is the attack. This, this, these are the attacking players and these are the defending players. But since I didn't want anyone on here, it's just for me on single player. That's blank. But what you do is you do attacking players and then test for at all in that area. Those are the commands for that red square. If you want the if you want the attacking team to be the red team, um, you'd say team equal red. Oops, team equal red, like that. And then in the defending one for the defending team, it'd be blue team. So same place is testing for and then blue. And then what this would do is this would tick down if. A person on the red team stood in it, it would tick down. If they're blue, it wouldn't. If there's two red people stood in it, it'll tick down twice as fast. But if there's two red people and a blue person, one blue person will cancel out the red person, it'll only tick down once. So that's how this works. Um, it's a bit complicated. 
Um, Seth Link has a video on this himself, so I'm not going to go over how that works. But if you just look at that, if you want to get that design down, then that's how it's that's how it's done there. Um, there are other things that I could show, but really the best way of learning how to use the how to use the scoreboard commands is just to use them yourself. But I've just shown this because most people I didn't think of this myself. Most people don't think of using objectives as a variable. It's a really really clever idea. But that's just one use of it, and there are many other things you can do. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I hope it's helped. I hope you now have a better understanding of scoreboards um, and know a bit more about them and how you can use them in mini games and stuff like that. Um, so, if so, that's good because that means I've, I've done my job properly with this video. If you like the video, like it. If you favourite, favourite, if you. you and I'm still working on the outro. I've, uh, 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 well, I'll, I'll, I'll worry about that later on. But yeah, if you've enjoyed the video, good. And apart from that, I will see you in the next video. Again.